Thank you, Vandana. And up next, we have Suzanne. Suzanne, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Okay, I am here. Thank you so much. Um, it's so wonderful to be here. Thank you, Dr. Shiva Ji. Um, I would like to please ask, um, I'm very much focused on how we can kind of heal ourselves to heal the world around us. And you had mentioned, you know, separation consciousness is what is adding to this great divide. Um, what are some ways that you feel that we can, you know, take our own control back within our own healing, you know, ourselves basically at the most cellular level to heal ourselves in a way that we can contribute the best of ourselves back to the world? First is by knowing that we are not separate, that the health of our cells is shaped by the soil and the biodiversity. Yeah? And so we are related to the earth. The second is no part of our body is separate from any other part. And therefore, all holistic healing is about the whole. Now, you know, Cartesian thought made holistic look ugly and bad made organic look ugly and bad. The word organic means the science of living systems. Holistic means to see the whole because no whole is only its parts. It is more than its parts because the parts in relationship make something much bigger than what the parts alone would be. This is the lesson of quantum theory. This is the lesson of ecology. This is the lesson of interconnectedness. So the alternative to separation as a way of thinking is interconnectedness as a way of thinking. Thank you, Vandana. And now we have jo Johanna. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, if that this, this Johanna. Vandana Shiva, we met a couple of years ago at live at The Real Truth about um, the Real Truth About Health conference in Long Island. And we had a wonderful conversation. I am currently putting together a next level university, starting it online. Um, and I am, I am hoping that there will be a course that can be taught by you and by all the work that you have done that connects what you're so often speaking about and that some few people teach that colonialism feeds right into this super colonialism that we're experiencing right now. And how, however, how we see the signs of awakening everywhere in the end of the patriarchal age. Is that something that you have um, as, a, as a course? Well, you know, my book, Oneness Versus One Percent, is precisely on that. And if you want to follow up on anything, please write to earthuniversity at navdanya.net. Thank you, Vandana. And up next we have, and again, I hope I am pronouncing this correctly, uh, Mayuri. Uh, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Yeah. Um, hi, Vandana. I was just going to ask, uh, thank you for the great talk. And um, I was just going to ask, is there, what is the main difference between natural and Vedic farming versus organic? Because I read an article where it said organic was separate from natural or Vedic yeah. farming. Okay, so I want to go back. You know, remember I mentioned Albert Howard, <laughs> who was sent to India in 1905. And he watched the farms. So Rich, he said, I can't improve this. I got to make the Indian peasant my professor. What was the Indian peasant practicing then? Vedic farming, yeah? Non-violence to the earth, working with the earth. What Howard wrote in the Agricultural Testament, available in the US through the Rodale Press, is what got to be called the organic movement. As I said, the organic word means living systems, working with living systems. It's both a science and a practice that comes from the science. Recently, Okay, so there are many systems that have grown out of working with nature. Permaculture is one, grew from Australia, where they realized the indigenous people used to farm with trees. So a permanent agriculture. Biodynamic farming, um, Rudolf Steiner, who came to India and realized that principles of agriculture are the same as the principles of Ayurveda. 
of the subtle energies. Many, many systems. People like Fukuoka in Japan wrote a book called The One Straw Revolution, called it Natural Farming. Now, so there are many names for farming with nature. More recently, the word natural farming has been promoted to attack organic because organic got organized. It was becoming a market, 25% growth. It had standards and you couldn't get GMOs out there with organic. So to kill the GMO block, they floated an attack on organic. I know this because I've been through it in my country, you know. A, a fellow who knows nothing was floated, it's a natural farming guru. And his first sentence is always, oh, 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 earthworms are important. As if there are no earthworms in the soil. Organic is important. As if Howard didn't learn organic from India and take it abroad. So organic is the alternative to industrial agriculture at the level of an organized system at a world scale. So they had to attack it. And then they created this ideology at this organic versus natural, which is ridiculous. True natural and true organic are the same. And then they weren't even further. 2.2 billion was borrowed from private banks and farmers are forced to organize to be supply chain providers. So when you see attacks on organic, they're very often paid attacks by the industry itself. All ecological systems of farming might have different names. The principles are always the same. Work with nature, work with nature, work with nature for the health of the soil and the health of the people.